Good morning. Welcome to the Elm, the Enlightened Living Ministries, where our mission is to help to lead people to an elevated relationship with God and a better understanding of the self. Happy Mother's Day. I am so happy that we have so many people out here today that are having an opportunity that we did not have last year. And that is to connect with your mothers, your grandmothers, your aunts, or whomever has been that woman in your life to help you become the person that you are and to help you become a mother. So we have so many varieties of and pathways of becoming a mother that we celebrate them all today. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you today thanking you. Thanking you, God, because you have provided healing in our world. We recognize that there are some of our brothers and sisters who are still ravaged with certain things, but we also acknowledge the progress that we have made, the way that we are able to celebrate Mother's Day this year, that we weren't allowed to celebrate it last year, with in-person graduations, being able to go to restaurants with our family, to celebrate those things that we have accomplished. We thank you, dear Father, for us being able to be physically connected with our mothers, our grandmothers, and our great-grandmothers. This time last year, dear Father, so many of us were isolated. But you found a way to bring us back together again. You used all of our strengths and all of our talents, dear Father, and you showed us that we should believe in you And by believing in you, you showed us that we can believe in ourselves. Those things that you have given us, dear Father, that we need to embrace. And we say thank you. For our family and friends, dear Father, who are grieving on this Mother's Day. Because they have lost their mothers. Because they have lost their children. Because they have lost their grandparents because they have lost that significant person in their life that has either allowed them to be a mother or that was a mother to them, dear Father. We embrace them. We let them know that we love you and that we recognize what you are going through and growing through and that we are here, dear Father, to love on them to embrace them, and to help them remember who you are by you being there through us. Because, dear Father, all lies in your hands. As we receive this message today, dear Father, we ask that you open our hearts, minds, and spirits and to let us know, dear Father, that you love us, that you have us and there's nothing that we need to be afraid of in life. Amen. Motherhood. One of the best opportunities that God gives us. It is a way of God saying to us, I trust you to be the vessel that will bring forth a part of my creation. Mm. Such a beautiful thing. God trusting us to be a vessel. And sometimes the vessel becomes the person that leads, guides, protects, and directs that spirit into adulthood. Sometimes the vessel 
It's the person that bring forth the spirit that must release it to another that would lead God direct and protect it in another way. However you have become a mother or whatever role you have played in becoming a mother is God's way of saying, I trust you. Some of us are adoptive mothers. Some of us are birth mothers. Some of us are godmothers, grandmothers, aunts, fathers, grandfathers, uncles, cousins, and friends who have had to take on the feminine role of being a mother. But it's still God's way of saying, I trust you. Mothering is a responsibility that increases as our children age. I remember when I became a mom and my mom said to me that her mother said to her, they pat on your knee when they're young, but they pat on your heart when they are older. And I didn't fully understand that until I became a mother and I watched my children grow. And yes, In the beginning, they pat on your knee. They're asking you for things. They're there right around our ankles, in between our legs, doing the things that a toddler does. But as they get older, they are confronted with things that we cannot help them with. Mothering is a gradual release that allow our children to move closer to their God essence and further away from our essence. Sometimes, as mothers, we feel threatened by that. But it's all a part of God's plan. Exodus chapter 20 instructs our children to honor their mothers and their fathers so that their days may be long. And that is true. But as mothers, we need to understand that we need to give our children something to honor by the way we treat them and the way we treat ourselves. Motherhood requires so much work nurturing someone whom we cannot see and believing and then once the child is born requiring nurturing through food love and comfort all while guiding them to love God by the way that we as mothers love them. We must educate them in many things, including the expectations of society and the education system there. Educating and nurturing their interest and talents as they grow into who God created them to be. Educating ourselves because times are always changing. Motherhood. Such a blessing and an opportunity for growth. For love for expression, for creation. There's a poem by Khalil Gibran written over a hundred years ago in his book, The Prophet. He reminds parents of their role in their children's lives. 
The poem is entitled, On Children. And I've read that poem before, and I would like to read it again today. And the woman held a babe against her bosom and said, Speak to us of children. And the prophet said, Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backwards nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bowls from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer seeks the mark upon the path of the infinite, and he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness. For even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves the bow that is stable. Many have questioned what did Gibran mean when he said, your children are not your children. What he was simply saying is that your children, although they come through you, they belong to God. See, God sends those children through us, but they belong to him. Motherhood and all of its beauty begins with the birthing process. And one of the most beautiful things about being a mother is seeing our children solve some of the same problems that we were faced with, but solving it in a different way. You see, that's what the prophet meant in the poem when he says, they are the children of tomorrow. See, they faced some of the same challenges that we faced when we were their age. They faced some of the same challenges that their foreparents faced at that age or during that particular stage in life. But they solve it in another way. They solve it based on the problems of that day, based on where they are, where God has elevated society. They're solving the problems that way. And that's why it says they are the children of tomorrow, not of yesterday. Motherhood allows us to experience a peace of God. And how does it do that? Because that gradual release that we give our children, it is called free will. To make the choices for themselves. Because... They have to figure it out just like we did. But it is that gradual release. A gradual release. Not that we just send them all out there at one time. But it's that gradual release for them to grow into their God essence. It actually allows us to experience a bit of heaven here on this earth. To all of our new mothers and our new grandmothers, 
Happy Mother's Day from the Elm. To all of our experienced mothers and experienced grandmothers, Happy Mother's Day from the Elm. For all of the children and grandchildren who are grieving the loss of your matriarch, we at the Elm want to say we love you, we honor you, and we understand where you are and what you're dealing with because we have been there. To mothers who have lost children, we want to say from the Elm, we love you and we support you. We have been where you are. Happy Mother's Day from the Elm. We love you. We celebrate you. Namaste. And God bless.